Welcome back everybody to the ultimate breakdown here on Kini K TV. In this episode, I want to go over the main event for UFC 238 between Henry Cejudo and Marlon Moraes. In this breakdown, we will take a closer look at the tail of the tape. I will give you guys my own personal fighter cards that I have made. I will break the fight down and then at the end, I will go over who I think will win come fight night. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video. Let's start off with the tail of the tape. The flyweight champion of the world, Henry Cejudo, has a professional record of 14 wins with 2 losses. He is 32 years old and stands in at 5 feet 4 inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds making his bantamweight debut and has a reach of 64 inches. His opponent Marlon Marais has a professional record of 22 wins, 5 losses and 1 draw. Marais is 31 years old and stands in at 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Marais has a reach of 67 inches. In this matchup, Marlon Marais is the one with the high end reach advantage. But also one thing that is pretty important is the fact that Marlon Marais in terms of weight will be equal to Henry Cejudo if not bigger. Henry Cejudo has always been the bigger fighter at flyweight because of his stature he was always one of the bigger fighters at that weight class and he was always able to use his size advantage in the octagon especially when it came down to really holding down opponents taking them down and being the stronger and more physical fighter than the opponent but i will be talking about this a bit more in depth in the breakdown part for now let's move on starting with the flyweight champion of the world henry cejudo has an overall rating of 92, with 88 striking, 95 grappling, 92 stamina, 91 chin, 92 defense, and a 93 physicality attribute rating. His standard attributes are his grappling and physicality. As I said earlier, Henry Cejudo has always been one of the more bigger fighters at flyweight, pairing that sheer weight and muscle mass with Olympic level, Olympic golden medal level wrestling, he is definitely a nightmare for anybody that will be fighting him at flyweight. Switching over to his opponent, the magic man Marlon Moraes has an overall rating of 91, with 93 striking, 88 grappling, 91 stamina, 91 chin, 92 defense, and a 90 physicality attribute, showing great precision and a lot of patience. Pairing that up with great distance management and footwork and great defense, Moraes is a very very difficult fighter to get in on. So with all that concluded, how would the fight play out? Let's move on to the breakdown part. In one of the more stylistically intriguing fights of the entire year, we have Henry Cejudo recently defeating TJ Dillashaw and also Demetrius Johnson before that, moving up in weight to challenge for the 135 pound belt against the hottest and most dangerous contender in the division. Marias immediately set himself apart after his debut loss against Rafael Asansao by defeating John Dodson, finishing Aljamain Sterling in the first round with a beautiful knee, stopping Jimmy Rivera in a similar fashion, and then going in there and stopping Rafael Asansao via submission. When it comes to Henry Cejudo, we have recently seen a little switch in his stances. He is now turning a bit more to the karate stance, for example like Conor McGregor, he has his lead arm powering out and trying to control and get a feel for the opponent's lead hand, which is the jab, when he himself switches to southpaw. Now he doesn't really fight in southpaw all that often, but when he does fight in southpaw, this creates a big opening for a rear body kick and a straight down the middle. Against, for example, Demetrius Johnson, Mighty Mas was able to hit him with quite a few body kicks. Now, when Henry Cejudo was in Southpaw or when Demetrius Johnson himself switched to Southpaw, he was able to catch him with those body kicks. But the thing is, Demetrius Johnson is a lot quicker, a lot lighter on his feet, and just in general, a lot more fluid than Marlon Marias. So for Demetrius Johnson to be able to get him very quickly, hit him with a roundhouse kick to the body, that is something that a few people can only get away with. When it comes to Marlon Marias, I think that Marlon Marias will hit Henry Cejudo more so with lead head kicks, as for example DJ was able to hit him with. Now when it comes to Marlon Marias, his specialty, his bread and butter is that lead head kick and not to discredit any other kicks in his arsenal, but that lead head kick is something that is very well timed, very well sharpened and overall it is a tool that will either make or break Marias' performance. Now what the lead head kick or lead, you know, leg kick, body kick, whatever it may be, what the lead kick presents 
is distance management. Now, distance management is something that Henry Cejudo has greatly improved at, has learned the abilities and the ways to close in the distance and get the fight where he wants it to be. But at the same time, he knows exactly how to keep the distance himself. Now, obviously, that is against those flyweights. And if we take a look at his loss against Joseph Benavidez, Joseph Benavidez was pretty much not walking into Henry Cejudo. He was keeping himself on the outside, moving, being light on his feet, jabbing, and fainting. When it comes to Marias, that is also a crucial part of his game. Now his precision and timing, that doesn't come by itself. It is always set up by great head movement, great feints, and the ability just to see openings and just capitalize with them. So coming back to Benavidez against Cejudo, Cejudo had a lot of trouble closing the distance and he was really just walking into big shots and when you try to walk the bigger opponent down which in this matchup Henry Cejudo has to do because if he doesn't close the distance he's gonna get picked apart especially nowadays with his more wide stance he's gonna be less stationary now obviously he's not gonna be fighting in that stance the, the majority of the fight but I do believe that we will see glimpses of that style or stance I should say quite a few times now what that stance really brings to the table is the ability to get a feel for the opponent's punching range but one thing that it doesn't really handle good against is the range that the kicks will be presented at. So when it comes to Marlon Marais, his go-to head kick, the lead head kick, is going to be something that Henry Cejudo is not going to be really getting a good read on or a good timing on. So I do believe that that kick is going to be something that Henry Cejudo is going to be get hit with quite a few times as he's trying to close in the distance. Now, when it comes to Marlon Marais, we haven't really seen him fight against people that truly chased him down or, or try to cut off the ring against him, put his back against the cage and really just make him fight in a very tight space. He always had opponents that let him freak in a way, right? Against Asanso, he had a lot of freedom. Against Aljamain Sterling, he had a lot of freedom. Rivera, John Dodson, these guys, they didn't really pressure him. They didn't really pick up the pace. They didn't really mix it up in a way that Henry Cejudo is very good at. So I would also have to expect one thing that Henry Cejudo will be definitely bringing to the table is the fact that not only is he going to be able to mix it up, but he will be a lot faster than most or every opponent that Marlon Marais has faced. The speed was something that, for example, TJ Dillashaw, he's pretty fast himself, but against Cejudo, he looked like a very, very slow fighter. And when it comes to Marlon Marais, who isn't really as active as TJ, who is a lot more calculated, who doesn't really throw as much, who takes his time a lot more. I do believe that in the instances that Henry Cejudo tries to mix it up and use his speed in his own advantage, I do believe that Henry Cejudo will find instances where he can get the better of exchanges and that is really what he needs. If he can get the better out of exchanges, he can probably tie Marlon Marais up and from there he can proceed to the grappling department. Now unquestionably in the grappling department, the golden medalist is going to be the guy that will be coming out on top probably 10 out of 10 times. So for Henry Cejudo to get a hold on somebody like Marlon Marais, who in his own right is a very good grappler, great Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, will be coming to a bit of a realization that this is not the average flyweight that he is used to fighting. Marais is a pretty big bantamweight, physically he's pretty strong and I do believe that he's gonna have a bit more success defending from takedowns because obviously he has great footwork, great movement, that in itself will be having him out of range. But when Henry Suhuda does shoot in, I think a big threat that will be present is that lead kick from Marais as he was able to catch Jimmy Rivera but more importantly Aljamain Sterling as Aljamain was trying to shoot in for a takedown himself and he got caught with a knee midway through. So when Suhuda tries to shoot him for a takedown, for example, it will most likely be from him trying to catch a certain kick or time himself to get in range to follow up in a clinch, over under, inside trip, and get the fight to the ground in that manner. If he tries to just go for the legs, I would have to believe that he will probably time a certain kick as he did against Demetrius Johnson and proceed to get a takedown in that manner. Now, out of the two scenarios, I would have to believe that him trying to go for an over under inside trip like he did against Demetrius Johnson, that will probably be the only safe way to get Marais to the ground. I believe that for him to try and counter a certain kick and shoot him for a takedown, that is very risky. I would have to believe that that certain takedown attempt will have to come at a point where it is really out of desperation and from a point where other ways to get the fight to the ground with have failed. Then I do believe that shooting in as he's kicking or you know timing whatever shot it may be to shoot him for the legs, then I see it happening. But then again, with the movement of Marais distance management, I think it's going to be pretty difficult. Add on top of that, Marais is going to be the taller and rangier fighter. Not to say that it is impossible, but it's a very unlikely way for me to see Henry Cejudo taking down Marais. But if he can get a hold of a leg and catch it successfully, I do believe that his chances of taking down Marais are very high and once he gets the fight to the ground i do believe that henry cejudo is skilled enough to keep marais down wear him out 
pin him like he did with Demetrius Johnson, stall the rounds, score points, and be a very smart fighter because at the end of the day, Henry Cejudo is a very smart fighter. He knows how to win rounds and it's pretty rare to see him get outsmarted in a fight. Now, talking about the submission game, I don't really think that Henry Cejudo is the type of guy to really go for submissions all that much. Then if you take a look at Marlon Moraes, I think that with his actual just size and Brazilian jiu-jitsu skill, I think that with the size and skill, I would have to believe that he's not going to get muscled into a submission. It would, it would have to be a certain slick out of the blue submission that Cejudo can catch him with or even Marais. Marais can catch him with a submission as well if he's on his back and is able to create enough distance to slap in a submission then anything can happen. So I believe that the stand-up game will in the first opening few rounds will definitely be dominated by Marlon Marais' movement his jab, his distance management, but at the same time I do believe that as the rounds progress I would have to say after the second round the speed difference will become apparent and I believe that Henry Cejudo will find ways in to close in the distance and make it a very interesting fight. And if he can get close enough, I do believe that from there he can proceed to get to fight to the grappling department where he outshines Marlon Moraison. Now with all that being said, who do I think will win come fight now? Now I'm very torn in between. We have Marlon Marais, who's just a way bigger, stronger fighter who has, you know, he's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, tremendous knockout um, abilities, great powerful hands, great timing with his kicks, great leg kicks. So a fighter who always comes forward. And then if we take a look at Henry Cejudo, he's a fighter that always likes to come forward as well. So we're going to have two come forward fighters meeting in the middle of the octagon. And who is going to be taking the first step backwards? I would have to believe that early on from the opening of the fight, Henry Cejudo will probably back up Marlon Marais because of his speed. I think that he's going to be blitzing him pretty early on. And with Marlon Marais being himself, he's probably going to be very much so eager to find a way to control the opponent, to find a way to what he's doing, get a read on him. And analyze him and then approach him in that manner but i don't really think that henry cejudo will be walking down marais if anything i think that marais will be walking down cejudo but then again with the takedown presence of cejudo i don't really think that marlon marais will be very keen on throwing a lot of black kicks or body kicks but i think that when he does throw it will be very calculated and very on point so i do not expect a lot of kicks from marlon marais early on so i think that when it comes to the boxing range now fundamentally marlon marais has way better boxing but the thing is the speed you know speed kills but i'm just gonna say it. i'm gonna go with henry cejudo in this fight just logically speaking i just see henry cejudo being able to deal with marlon marais and what he presents to the table now one thing that i think that would be a big contribution to marlon marais winning if he's gonna win i think that the power difference is gonna be very much so apparent we're gonna see something similar to max holloway versus dustin poirier the rematch just the sheer difference in the way that dustin is able to hit max and the way that max took those shots compared to max landing shots on dustin poirier we're going to see something similar to that because henry cejudo he doesn't really have the biggest of punching power yes he was able to knock out tj dillashaw but you know he didn't it's not like he knocked him out cold right so the kicks will probably have to go to marlon marais you know his leg kicks are very strong um timing is very like unprecedented in the ufc you know he's he's very much so one of a kind but i think that marlon marais hasn't really faced anybody that can not only walk the opponent down but also be very skilled in mixing it up obviously he's facing a golden medalist i think that if henry cejudo can walk him down find a couple openings i think that he will be able to neutralize the kicking game of marlon marais and when it comes to and when it comes to straight boxing henry cejudo he is faster but not as technical as marais so i would have to believe that once the fight comes into that inside range I think that Marlon Marais will probably get taken down or clinched up against the fence, whatever it may be. And from there, I do see Henry Cejudo being able to take down Marlon Marais. But then again, Marlon Marais is a lot bigger. So how can he be dealing against somebody that is bigger than the opponents that he's used to facing? So, you know, all in all, only time will tell how the fight will play out. For now, I'm sticking with Henry Cejudo. Maybe come fight night, I will change my mind. I will probably do a reaction stream through the event. So if you guys are wondering, come through, stop by and ask who I got that day. So with that being said, this has been the ultimate breakdown by Keeney KTV. If you guys liked the video and would like to support the channel, head over to teespring.com and buy some official Keeney KTV merchandise. But with that being said, as always guys, leave what you guys think of the fight in the comment section down below. Who do you guys think will win come fight night? I have been Keenan from Keenan KTV, signing off. Later.